Next on our panel is um, Nina Sankari. Nina is from Poland. She's vice president of the Atheist Coalition in Poland. She writes and translates articles for the biggest free thinking and feminist centers in Poland. And she's participated in many international conferences related to secularism, women's rights, and political and social issues. So, Nina. Thank you for this presentation. I will just add that I'm a feminist. Uh, the title of my presentation is uh, Poland in the Shadow of the Church, and it is failed democracy, and it is um, a tribute to our um, philosopher, secular philosopher, late. Uh, he died in June. Uh, who wrote a um, book uh, with this title in early 19, uh, I'm sorry, early 90s, and already there she stated that Poland is already a confessional state. Uh, today, uh, this year, Poland celebrates uh, the 25th anniversary of the first free election in 1989. And today, uh, if not distributed, I would uh, entitle my uh, presentation Under the Boots of the Church. And uh, this year we celebrated uh, this anniversary of the free elections. Uh, called a victory of democracy over totalitarianism. Uh, however, we have to admit the bitter truth that the changes that have occurred over the past quarter century have resulted not so much in a long-awaited and deeply desired freedom and democracy, uh, especially seen from the perspective of secularism. And here I will recall what Sue said. This democracy, what we heard or seen, is not what we get. And we already heard about it uh, many times, that under the cover of, of democracy uh, occurred many changes that resulted in the end uh, in the race of uh, fundamentalism, religious, fundamentalism, religious uh, race of religious right. But also, I think it is very important to say that it was not by uh, accident that uh, this rise occurred under the rule of neoliberalism. And I think that the role of neoliberals in this process is also uh, to be mentioned. Um, 10 minutes is not uh, much to describe two and a half uh, decades of dismantling of secularism and the progressive clericalization that accompanied so-called democratic transformation. Uh, there is no time to speak here about this process in details, so I will uh, just maybe uh, put on the screen all the stages of the secularization that occurred in laws because um, it is even not all. Starting with uh, 1989, we had a massive changes, systemic changes in Polish law that converted previous almost every state into confessional one. And uh, in, we can say that one non-democratic regime was exchanged for another one, this time a clerical one. Uh, I will not comment all those laws, but you can see that we had uh, changes in confessional laws, we had changes in education, Education Act that 
uh, obliged that, that introduced Christian values as guidance at public school. And the public school uh, is now uh, um, very like to the, uh, we can uh, name it a Catholic madrasa, because there is less lessons of bio biology or physics or uh, chemistry than of religion. Uh, act on media, uh, both public and private, which were obliged to respect uh, Christian values, and so on, and so on. I will just pick one word about the new constitution, because uh, the new constitution was already without separation of sta state and church, and uh, Polish bishops objected that this separation be uh, declared in the constitution. They objected also the uh, principle of um, secular state. They objected even neutral state, and it was replaced by the formula, very odd formula, of impartiality of the state. So state now uh, is not concerned by the problems if it occurs w uh, between uh, communities. Uh, in fact, it suggests that uh, state is not concerned about it. It is not a party in this uh, conflict. And also Article uh, uh, 196 on protection of religious feelings. Uh, it is very uh, important one because now it is uh, an article which could be qualified as a bastard of the canon law, just a little bit uh, manipulated. It is the same blasphemy. The same blasphemy that returned into Poland and uh, is acting recently. Um, Recently, a uh, um, Golgotha picnic case showed us that uh, artistical creation is uh, limited and uh, uh, performance of Golgotha picnic uh, had to be cancelled because uh, fundamentalist, Catholic fundamentalists uh, treated, treated um, the organizers with force they called uh, 30,000 people, footballers and other, uh, to uh, oppose uh, this performance. Yes, uh, as a result of that, uh, the Poland is crucified. You can see the cross in the parliament. You can see the, uh, the cross in the classroom. You can see uh, what um, we already heard from other uh, presentations, uh, obscurantism. And we have, for example, now science at the same level as, um, as uh, theology. Uh, doctorates at the public universities uh, have these topics. Uh, the President of the Warsaw Life Science University uh, is speaking at the solemn symposium on the occasion of the canonization of John Paul II, that John Paul II led us to the knowledge of truth. Uh, Polish Academy of Sciences is organizing debates in the framework of the cycle meeting science for two voices, etc. I will pass to the declaration manifesto of our uh, atheist coalition uh, as a result of our, our stance towards this situation. Poland crucified from parliament to the nurseries, post offices and the banks, women deprived of their rights to decide freely on their body and their fate, forced to continue their pregnancies despite serious fetal malformations and to give birth to non-viable children. Public schools converted to Catholic madrasa where students have more lessons of religion than of biology. Researchers 
undergoing pressure to restrict the freedom of scientific research. The artist with the mouth gagged. Doctors and teachers encouraged to recognize the supremacy of the divi divine law over the law of the state. Lawyers relying on canon law, priests who are above the law, and deputies praying for rain. And finally, citizens who without regard for their religion or lack thereof, pay taxes for appropriation of public space, memory and history by the Catholic Church and its imposition of the rules of the confessional state with the support of the political elites who profit from the alliance of the throne and the altar. When the state has withdrawn from the respect from the values of the Enlightenment, the very foundation of modern liberal democracy, and gave up civic education to the church and their dependent institutions, democracy is dying, leaving place to the populist authoritarianism. We stated in our declaration, uh, there is no time now to say what are lessons to be learned from this uh, Polish experience. I would say the main one is that it is not enough to have the secular principle uh, stated in the laws. It is not enough to have separation of state and church by laws because it is based only on the political balance of forces and could be at any time changed and completely annihilated. So what we really need it is to anchor deeply secular values in the society. And just to, uh, to finish my talk, I would like to invite you all cordially uh, next year to Poland, the last weekend of the March. We are organizing 80 days with debates, with Congress, with uh, Congress of on bioethics as well, and many other attractions. I distributed already those invitations and really welcome. Thank you, Nina. That, that illustrates um, how it's not just Islamist, um, fanatics who can create a theocracy. It's also the Catholic Church. They're very good at it too. They, they go about it in a different way, but it's just as effective.